All right, welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there. Um, for some more Naya Huatli action, we are starting off pretty early today. You can probably tell by all the the bright lights behind me, um, the sun shining through. It's uh, noon for us here. Um, starting the stream three hours early. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to have a, a fun stream day today. So um, we've been having a lot of fun with Naya Huatli. This deck has been one of my favorite decks to play. And I'm excited to play it again. I'm making two small changes. So this change I'm not thrilled about. And we'll see. Maybe I make it back after this league. But we've had three um, Huali Warrior Poets because we're a Huali deck. So we've had three, three and three for the Hualis. And I'm taking out one Huali Warrior Poet for a third Conclave Tribunal. The last time we struggled with like Rekindling Phoenix pretty bad. Um, and honestly, we probably just need a third removal spell in the deck. You know, we don't, don't really have, like, other removal. So, um, sometimes having five five drops has just been too many five drops in our low land deck and everything. And especially with March of the Multitudes being a late game spell. Um, so we've had a little bit too much top end like that. So I want to throw in another Conclave Tribunal. Um, best of luck, Matthew. Hey, Redgrave. Um... And uh, the other change is I'm taking out Collision Colossus from the sideboard for Night of Autumn. Um, that could be that could end up being a change I don't like so much. Uh, we'll see, like with the flyers and everything. Bas basically, how I got there was um, where is Collision Colossus? This card, Collision Colossus. I thought this was just pretty narrow of just like dealing the six damage to a flyer. So then I was taking out collision for crushing canopy. And then I was like going from crushing canopy to night of autumn. Cause I'm thinking maybe night of autumn is better. Honestly, maybe I just want crushing canopy. Cause I guess this deck really does struggle with the flyers. Um, so let's, let's go to crushing canopy. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so that's that's a slot that I'm not sure exactly what which one of those I want in my sideboard. Collision, Canopy, Night of Autumn. They're all similar-ish cards. Um, but we'll try Crushing Canopy. Is that the wrong Canopy art? I don't, to be fair, I don't love either Canopy art. I don't love either of these arts. They both have just too much going on and and everything so you want you want this one all right that should help that out save and time for naya Huatli. all right i need to go all right i need to update the deck list now let's take out these two night of autumns for two Crushing Canopy. Alright, update. Oh, that art has better flavor text? Okay. Uh, I mean, I like our mana base and everything here, and Huali's cool. We don't have a whole lot of lands in the stack. We got 22. Um, so being on the draw, hoping to draw our two and three drops. Um, I think I want to just cast this. Yeah, I just want to cast this flower. Get another land out. Make it even less chance that we draw a land. Uh, question, uh, any tips for a new streamer? I'm not doing anything live yet, just up uploading to YouTube so far. Um, uh, for streaming, I think that having a consistent schedule is, is pretty important. Um, so that your viewers know, you know, what to expect all, you know, and everything. Um, so sticking to your schedule even when times are kind of tough is, is important. Um, and, you know, ha having a schedule that you can stick to. Um, 
and so on. I think that's that's my biggest tip there, and of course interact with your Twitch chat. Also, are all decks except the donation decks made by yourself? No, not necessarily, and um, maybe not all, but some of the donation decks are also. I make some of the donation decks too. Um, some Come, probably. The song I don't know. I, I would guess over. like. 30 to 40 percent of the donation decks are uh, decks that people donate to see, like, you know, they want, like, whatever card uh, being played. Um, so they don't have a deck and and donate uh, the extra for me to make the deck uh, with whatever card or cards or interaction Go, or something like that. Go, dinos, go. Well, I'm glad we've drawn both of the Huatlis, the Warrior Poets. The Warrior Poets have been awesome, you know, against control. Come, sing the song of fame. I'm just going to put it in tapped. Just, I know shocking would make March better. I don't really want to tell my opponent that I have a March, because if we shock there, then our opponent just knows we have March. Um, come sing the song of fame. If you show remorse, hold that thought. All right, I think I can. All right, so if we march, we have four. I guess shocking would have made march lethal through one removal spell. And feast on their flesh. So even one removal spell to fairy dies. To fairy dying is pretty important. Because even though this takes Only it, time will tell. This is makes it long, like makes the game longer for us to win. Having to ferry off the battlefield is makes it, you know, pretty hard for our opponent to This is to not win. what was written. Everything must go. I guess I could have tried Bunold. Just save it though. Hey, what's up, Colonel Fault? All right, sideboard. Uh, I don't really have much here. Uh, TBH, don't really have much here. I could play Cinder Vines, I suppose. Um, I can just run it back. Uh, March of the Multitudes isn't isn't particularly great. That's all right. Um, but it's not particularly great. Would I rather have Cinder Vines or March? Conclave Tribunal is also not very good against like the Mortify to Fairy deck. And certainly trim a Conclave Tribunal. 
I can trim a march. That's two cinder vines. Could see my opponent playing like Lyra. Um, we do have the Tribunal there. I could have Crushing Canopy just to kill the Lyra. Hey, Gatsby. Um, yeah, I kind of feel like I'd rather have Canopy than Tribunal. Yeah, we got starting off with some Hualli today. We got a lot of Naya decks. We had two Naya decks, two Legends decks today. Hmm. It's an awkward hand because we don't have red mana. So, like, March and Tristani take forever to, to cast and everything. I'm going to go ahead and mulligan it. Um, I guess we're going down to five. I mean, Warrior Poet can win the game. And Warrior Poet's one of our best cards in the matchup, but we're, we're two lands behind. Yeah, Crush deals with Thief and Lyra. Like, Thief and Lyra are, are definitely two cards that I uh, can see my opponent um, bringing in. And then, yeah, Search for Escanta uh, at the very least. Hey, Zerf. Feeling pretty good today. I got a lot of sleep last night. Got, went to bed early. So feeling pretty good. I'm excited to go see Captain Marvel today. The Duke. With that Twitch Prime sub. Let's get some hype in the chat for the Duke. Um, I don't know what to do with this card, honestly. I honestly don't know what to do with that card. Because, like, if we have the other lands, it's going to be a card we're going to want. Because that's one of our very best cards. Uh, and that's an another land. Well, let's, let's shuffle that Huali back. Let's shuffle it back in from the from the graveyard. Oh, no. You're dealing with the cold. Boo. Start with Amara. They cannot cast down Amara. So they want to kill it after you like tap out, use Mortify. Radiant Champion. That was expected. But we got a 1 1 and we have a backup. Big question is if I want to throw out this Wally. And I think the answer is yes. Waiting on Huali doesn't, you know, Huali gets worse. Uh, they could certainly have like Chemistry's Insight here after you're already using a counter spell. They could have had just have had a Chemistry's Insight for that turn. If we wait till like they wrath the board, Huali's not going to be doing much after Akaya's wrath. I guess I shouldn't have said that my opponent would have the very best card they could possibly have. Good hand for the opponent. We need to move quickly. The, the cards in their deck had them spaced out well. All right, let's try not mull into five. Um, yeah, see, canopy is kind of rough. I don't know. Maybe maybe a tribunal instead of canopy. I don't like tribunal. I don't like canopy. I don't really love cinder vines. I don't really like any of our options for like the this last slot. Cause 
Hmm. Guess I'm just gonna play Tribunal. Alright, this is a hand we can keep. Um Hopefully we get to flip this Legion's Landing. Getting a Danto the first forward is a real big game against Esper Control. Where's my crushing canopy now? So they shocked in during our turn. You know, it's got to be for absorb. So we can, we can like march for one on there and step. They don't play anything. All right, so I'm not going to march for one now. I'll just play Tristani. A good card too. So if they want to, if they want to cast my spellbreaker, I get it back. If they want to Kaya's wrath, I get my spellbreaker back. Well then. Well then. Um I mean resolving a Johnny's probably our best thing. We we know they have a, an absorb in hand for how they played earlier. Um, if I go Amara, Spellbreaker, The donation deck. Okay, any open spots on Thursday? Yeah, I have tons of open spots on Thursday. Um, the only deck I have right now for Thursday is um, an Azorius deck around 8 p.m. That's the only deck I have on the schedule. So, any any time like you know ish, you know. Uh, obviously, it may not be exactly that time because of how the, the games work out and everything. It may be a little before or after, but around any time, you know, Eastern time, uh, that you'd like me to to try it out. So it's going to be Abzan Legends. Um, so we had two tokens. They're at four. Block, block, block. I mean, I guess we're, we're going for one. Whenever? Okay. All right, I'll just... Uh, 
All right, so Abzan. Legends. Thursday. All right, so we're gonna pump up Amara no and Spellbreaker. Of mine fights alone. Oh, they have cast down. That's really annoying. They have cast down. I guess they kind of need cast down to kind of stay alive. Strength is born of struggle. All right, so I was just fine to attack with everything, but now if they're going to be cast downing, all right, so let's say they cast down Spellbreaker, then Spellbreaker blocks Amara, they block block, they take three, go to one, and I just have a one one. But then we also flip landing. I just I can't block for a Johnny, which is a problem. Oh, they can't target Spellbreaker as hexproof. That's a neat little party trick. I forgot about that one. Alright, so do I want to play hero? I mean, they have to have a wrath anyway. Right? So, like, not a real reason to play hero. Okay, so we're doing. I did that one. Capable of more than you assume. All right, that'll do it. Good job, Naya Huatli, taking down the Esper Control Menace. And starting off this early day with a win. Yeah, them getting Tristani is not, <laughs> not too good for them. I mean, our opponent probably just didn't have another, another choice, right? So, like... Just, like, our opponent just, if they didn't have, if they were just sitting with, like, Absorb and whatever in hand, they at least play that and get, like, two lifelink blockers um, with the Tristani, but not strong enough. I don't, I don't think our opponent did that thinking that they would keep Tristani, because otherwise they would have played the Tristani earlier. Pretty sure our opponent knew what was going to happen. Not an ideal hand, but it's a hand. Well, they I think they had to take it, otherwise they were dead because of the, the pump that it did. So I think they just had to take it and hope that they could stabilize with their 2-3s against 1-1s. One um, would have been why I think they took it to begin with. The, the only other option is like taking a token. Um, Hey, well, that's convenient. Gain a life against Spe Spear Spewer. So I, I don't think they necessarily played that bad either way. They, they probably had were in a rough spot. <laughs> I 
We are landing on some kind of legion. Eventually. All three the Legion's landings. Be really sad if the opponent has Chain Whirler. So we get to march for four. And then next turn, attack all, flip the legions, landing, play Huatli, kill two runaway steamkins, and the spear spewer. So maybe don't have to attack all. Leave one back. Be able to block steamkin and protect my Huatli. What does this thing say? Deals one damage to each player, so it cannot deal damage to a, a planeswalker. Leave two back to block. Hey Zebaj. Zebaj. Good good early day to you. We're killing two Steamkins. Um I could I could kill the Huali and, and kill the Spear Spewer as well, but the Spear Spewer just isn't that valuable. But we're gonna shoot both of these Steamkins. This is about to get interesting. I mean, I guess I could. I mean, I could kill the Huali and kill these two Steamkins and go minus two, minus one. Keep them from doing that. Um. No, even though they even though they get the extra mana for a turn, I, I want to try to keep Huali alive. Really wish Wally could minus four. I would I would take all three Steamkins out in a heartbeat if I could. I could minus four. You shall be erased from history. This part out. At least I, you know, ate a spell. You know, Huali's still a three for one there. You know, took out two Steamkins and a Shock. That's not bad. Three for one for Huatli. Yeah, as long as they don't have Chain Whirler, I think they were in a pretty good spot. Chain Whirler is like the thing that would rough us up real bad. Awesome, BRZ. Glad you're glad you're enjoying it. How do you like the unmoored egos in the sideboard? That's the card that um certainly considering taking out. Um 
And the, the version that I'm playing today, I'm taking out the Unmoored Egos. I'm putting in the fourth negate. Cause I just I just realized I didn't even have four negates. So I'm putting in the fourth negate in the sideboard, which is you know still good against all the, the decks that Unmoored Ego is good against, but could also help out against Burn. Um, and I'm think I want some other card for Sultai. And so I think I think I'm good I'm trying a Ral is it Viceroy in the sideboard? Over that other that second on Mordigo. Yeah, the blue black cards are they have the blue black decks like Demir and Grixis, yeah, are definitely relying on the sideboarding. Um they have really good sideboard options. I would like to kill the Steamkin, please. We can make another token to deal with this Vyoshino Pyromancer easy enough. With having Danto the first Ford out here that um, makes tokens, I'd like to get another land because you don't want to be able to, to make a token and cast a spell and stuff like that. I'm not sure exactly what I want for that, my one slot for Sultai. Uh, in the deck. Um, and Grixis discard. Um, Star of Extinction is an option. I did not play History last turn because I would rather trade a Vampire token for the Pyromancer than a, a Knight for the Pyromancer. And also with that flower, if we would have drawn a land, then it would have been all the history plus uh, a Danto. But we just drew another history, so we'll just do that. Oh, yeah, I already have four soots in the deck. Yeah. But I, I think I'm going to try a Ral. Um, you know, having a Planeswalker stick around. The problem is, is like, Ral... There's a... A non-zero amount of times that Ral minus three does not actually kill like the threat you need to kill, and that's like the big problem with Ral. I don't know. This game's over. gain six life expect no mercy their strength is your strength I mean how often do you get to be at 28 against a, a mono red burn with the spear spewer they had turn one spear spewer and we're chilling at 28 you don't see that too often yeah the thing about like those Sultai matchups, though, they're real grindy, of course. And if I don't find Bolas or or um, Angrath, I've been really struggling, like card advantage wise, to keep up with Sultai at times. And so that's why I was thinking just an, a Ral, um, give me the eighth one. All right. Uh, Mono Red, Baffling Ends for Steamkin, Conclave Tribunal for Steamkin. Um, just those with Shauna. I don't know, all of our cards are kind of decent. I think I'm going to take out March. Because they're like killing my creatures. March is only good when you have a bunch of other creatures out, kind of. Yeah, let's take out Marches. Legion's Landing actually looked awesome there. That'd be usually kind of a card I would trim on. Um, I guess Hero of Precinct 1. 
has been spectacular with us having a lot less of these. Huatli is only good with other creatures too. Actually, let's keep Shauna in, take out a Huatli, keep one march in for one hero. And go like that. Ah, oh, dang. Sorry, Ross. Yeah, the Huatlis are, are pretty niche. Um, Huatli Radiant Champion has actually been showing up quite a bit in um, Selesnya Tokens these days. Um, looking at like Selesnya Tokens 5-0 list, it's, it's uh, kind of replacing a Johnny. We're figuring out the power it has. Hey, Crumble. Uh, I don't know what's for lunch. I haven't ate anything yet today. Um, may just get some yogurts here in a, in a little while. I have a lot of yogurt. Whenever I went grocery shopping the other day, they had a sale on yogurt, and I picked up a bunch. How did Grix's control deck do yesterday? It did okay. We went 2-2, two -two, but... I think we got kind of a little unlucky with our two losses. Um, one of our losses, we had like stabilized in game three, but our opponent top decked to Bane Fire uh, right before we were gonna like we had Niv Niv Mizzet on the battlefield. Um, and another loss against Sultai was just really having a a bad flood. Um, so you know it was pretty unfortunate, but I think the deck did well. Really good start for the opponent. Lava Runner into Steamkin into Steamkin Shock. Um, I I don't lift as much as I used to. Um, being a stay-at-home streamer and everything, and I don't have as much incentive without traveling and everything, but I still exercise some. Yeah, real, real good hand. We'll give you this one. Hey, Panther. Sorry you've had a frustrating game of magic. Steamkin is certainly the scariest card in their deck. Um, without Steamkin, I... I like our chances. Ugh. Are we drawing the third land? If I know we have a third land and we can go Shauna into history into history, that's that's really strong. I mean I think we keep this. This is this is a risk, of course, but tribunals are good too. But we kinda need the third land for the tribunals also. But we got our two white sources, we just need any land. Um, and our next two draws. In our first two draws, I suppose. Hey, TJ. Or TG. Yeah, we got early Todd today. There we go. That's a good good draw. Don't have any red sources yet, but don't have any red cards yet, so... That works. Yeah, shocking against red is not... Not the best. If our opponent was playing Steamkin here, I was going to Tribunal the Steamkin. But they didn't shock, so let's play History. Spear Spear could win. could win this for them. They already played their land first. And that would have been really nice if they just hit land, land. Ooh, our opponent needs to attack there. Do I tribunal anything?
Morning's going really good. Yeah, you know, just basically hopped in the shower and started streaming. But I got a lot of sleep last night. I'm feeling good today. They still they didn't even just play this land from over here. Come on, opponent. attack for a bunch. I don't know how much we're attacking for, but it's a bunch. They have to jump the Shauna and shoot me. Like, we're basically at 8 right now. Uh, with just, like, Firebrands doing a couple chump blocking and shooting me. Kind of thing. Alright, I like to see that. Burn spells not going upstairs is good. That's fine. We can we can certainly handle everything that they have on the battle on the battlefield here, so I don't mind that one bit. Oh yeah, they can't shoot me. Spellbreaker. Um can't shoot me this turn. You know, like still like they can just untap with the you know, have the lightnings go upstairs. Cause we're basically at eight. Um like, if they would have just fired off the lightnings in response to the Spellbreaker at us, and then put us down to four, and then have Firebrand shoot me, Firebrand shoot me. Oh, they can't they can't chump and then shoot because of, of Spellbreaker. That's the problem is the chump shoot. I was going to say, that could have put us down to two if Spear Spear put us down to one. So that, that Spellbreaker was pretty big time of not letting the Firebrand hit us. Um I'm taking this cuz I don't want that to shoot my 1/1 life linker after it blocks They have to chump with Spear Spewer. And this should be game. Spellbreaker is just a solid card in this deck. You know, it was real good for us against the Esper deck last game. We saw it do a whole lot for this this game. Um, honestly, if we didn't have Spellbreaker that turn, we might have lost that. Um, with If our opponent could have shot us with the Wizard's Lightnings and chump blocked with the Firebrands and shot us, they they drew the Wizards, another Wizard's Lightning the next turn. They had lethal the next turn if they could have done that. So if we just didn't have that Spellbreaker... Hey, Jeff Wolf. Thanks for the bits. Got some more of those. Watch some ads. Thank you kindly. Oh, the old... Probably not a good keep, but could be a good keep. We'll see if we draw another white source for history, but being on the play and going history, history, Tristani... Or even or history history of Johnny, you know, like either one. This curve is pretty nuts if we if we hit it. Balding Yeti says, "Help! I made diamond now and can't win a game. <laughs> I just can't get a good starting seven this morning. Sometimes, like those days happen, you know. Um, sometimes it's just not your day, and that's perfectly reasonable. Um, yeah, it's." 
don't be like, okay, this deck is terrible now. I'm never going to play it if it, you know if it got you there. Uh, you know the deck can have an off day, and uh, you know, run it back again. Keep your head up. Okay, Jeff, have a good day at work. Gobos. One pawns. All right, we're gonna play history, then history, then Tristani. So in two turns, we're gonna be attacking with a bunch of five five or five fours. Of course, we'll just play stomping ground or boss. This would be a good time for Stoke the Flames. Hey, Hazy Lad. Everything's going good today. Sun's shining outside. Got some good sleep last night, so feeling pretty good. I'm doing the early stream today because I'm going to go see the Captain Marvel movie later today. They got half price tickets on Tuesdays. So I'm excited to eat way, way, way too much um, movie theater popcorn, and probably not feel as good tomorrow. But it's gonna be—it's gonna taste so good tonight. So excited about that! Hey, Jeff Wolf, thank you so much. Keeping those bit, keeping those bits rolling on in. Hey, Smith. Both the high and the high emote and love, love emote. Nice. So I don't want to attack with the 2 2 there. I don't want to trade this 2 2 for two things, considering it'll be a 5 4 next turn. Been playing mono white aggro that splashes red for heroic reinforcements. That's the kind of deck that you really want a good starting 7 too. So if you're not having the good starting 7s. With that, it could be certainly be rough. Yeah, good thing we're not playing Karn. Otherwise, that Crater Maker would be rough. They did not. They could have sacrificed it and killed a knight, which I think they honestly should do. I think that's a good trade for them. Oh, really? A mono black mid range deck? That's pretty cool. There's a lot of really good cards with... Uh, a lot of good cards in black. A lot of good mid-range cards. Hey, Mike. Yeah, Nia Legends getting another shot. Um, yesterday, you know, didn't didn't do too well. Um, one of the viewers that signed up for Quip yesterday uh, for their donation deck that they wanted to play, they wanted to see play, they wanted to see Nia Legends. Um again today, so that's what we got on the list. And so that was that was kind of one of the reasons why I didn't run it back yesterday, you know, to the O2. I knew we were going to be playing it again today. Now we get to just block with these life linkers. So we want to block with both these life linkers so we just gain four life. Switch. Even though we haven't drawn a flower, was the only the only spell that we drew this game. Um, these cards are taken over, and that's that's honestly fine. At the beginning of the game, all I wanted to draw was a white source, and uh, thankfully we did. We've drawn four white sources. <laughs> We've done done good at drawing white sources. I'm gonna pump up these life linkas. Oh, you're right. Yeah, they could have just sacked their goblin with Skirk Prospector uh, to stop the life gain. Our kinship ensures our victory. 
See in yourself what I see in you. Attack. Not you. Good guy, Johnny. Is a Johnny like actually a cat? Like feline? Like in like the stories and stuff? Do they like talk about like does a Johnny do like cat things? Like whenever they have like the, the lore stories. Uh let's do the same kind of sideboard we did just a little bit ago. Um our opponent could certainly be oh no, we don't you don't necessarily play against people with the same record. I don't I don't know if I need Conclave Tribunal as much. I guess they have experimental frenzy. That's something I need to tribunal. I don't know, our cards are just pretty good. March is going to be better here than against regular mono red. I'm going to take out a Johnny. Yeah. No, you don't always play against people with the same record, no. Um, they try to pair you with a, you know, like the same record or a similar record, uh, but they also care about pairing quickly. So, you know, you don't just sit there and wait for four or five minutes waiting on somebody for the exact same record to have to be in the queue. Um, you know, so they pair quickly and try to pair the same, but it doesn't always happen. It doesn't usually happen, honestly. I would say it's unusual you get paired against somebody with the same, with the exact same record. Mono Black Mayhem. So Vicious Conquistador, Gutter Bones, Kite Sail Freebooters, re Reassembling Skeleton, Orzhov Enforcer, Priest of the Forgotten Gods, Play Crafter. So if I go on, I guess I should play Amara here, because if I go Amara, I can shock again and take out this thing. Wait, cancel. Let's actually just cast this card first. And then do this. So I guess I could have I guess I could have gone hero. No, I could not have heroed plus. Yeah, yeah, because hero would have gave me two two tokens with flower. So I could have just gone hero, flower, we have the four tokens, and then tribunal. But that's okay. This gives me the lifelink token, which is nice. I want the lifelink token. From the will of many, the might of one. So Johnny is a Leonin, which is some kind of feline. Okay. The might of one. Boom. Man, this deck is explosive. Yeah, we, we did kind of use our good draws against a, a deck that's not so good. So, may have kind of wasted our good draws there. Yeah. A Leonin is a ninja that dresses up like a cat in order to stay camouflaged. Wait, is that true? 
Hey, Robbie. There, yeah, no. There you go. It, it came up. It takes a little bit for the song command to work. It, like, once you do the song command, it's like it... It's like the bot starts listening to the, the song or something like that. So it usually takes, like, 10, 20 seconds. What do we have going on here? Hmm. Shock for history or play Amara? Shock for history. <laughs> this is the taker and the thief. The taker and the thief in the night. This is a song about Demir. Midrange. <laughs> That's a good one, King Toll. Yeah, if we would have drawn a land, we could have double Amara. <laughs> Get that double Amara value. Um, yeah, if it's about Esper, it'd be Type Taker and Thief. Someone's had a good hand against us. Got their shocks. Shock is a real good card against me. Unfortunately, this Watley Warrior Poet is not... Is not anything to ride home about. I wish I could double Amara. But I don't feel like double it, double Amara is a good idea. Yeah, no, Hostage Shaker is for Demir, Tithe Taker if we're talking Esper. They both work. Um. Wish we had just a different two drop with Amara. We have three Amaras in the deck and have them all in our hand. Alright, this Huali may win the game for us here. We'll see if they just try to put up a front of blockers. Um, you know, Huali can make three creatures not be able to block. So they have one phoenix. Oh, uh, they got a second phoenix now. Is that a third phoenix? Are you kidding me? Three phoenixes? Uh, 8, 11, 14, 17. That is crazy. Uh. Two phoenixes would not have been lethal. The third one is just ridiculous. All right, so let's get our other tribunal in. Um, yeah, you're kind of right. It's either our opponent gets lucky and wins or unlucky and loses uh, with that deck. Yeah, it's either they're, they just, they're unlucky and they don't find their phoenixes and then they lose, or they're lucky and they find the phoenixes and they win. Yeah, tower defense is an option. It's not a terrible option. What don't I want in this matchup? That's what I'm thinking of, like, what am I sideboarding out? Hero and Amara and Shauna 
they're definitely important cards, but Legion's Landing is less important. Let's take out a couple Legion's Landings. Um, March not as good either. Let's get these let's get these tower defenses in because I could certainly see them playing uh, the Red Sweeper, the Instant Speed Sweeper, where we want the tower defense. Uh, Cinder Vines is horrible against this deck. Just never just never play Cinder Vines against a Crackling Drake deck. I know that that's just a suggestion that a lot of people uh, want to say, but it's just very meretricious. It it looks like it could have value, but it doesn't. You're you're not going to win games because of Cinder Vines. A Johnny is good at making the creatures be able to attack into something bigger. Hmm. Yeah, Phoenix is really good in Modern and Legacy. Um, it's good in those older formats. Yep. Wish we had a flower. Let's try this out, though. Turn out our, our two Shocklands killed us last time. I was taking four damage from Shocklands. Please don't shock my Amara immediately, kind opponent. Hooray! <laughs> Gives our creatures plus zero, plus five, and reach until end of turn. Not one. We need some lands. Not another Amara. We have not done a good job of drawing non Amaras. Would have really preferred the land where I could have like held up tower defense as well. Um, after playing this Legion's Landing. Especially if our opponent has the Fiery Cannonade. Okay, that's a good sign. If we get to attack with the three creatures, that'd be awesome. So they need, like, you know, specifically shock plus mountain to keep us from doing that. That's mountain. And that was shocked in. Let's see if I could have just held up the tower defense. We needed that third land. All right, well, now we got third land. But now I cannot play Amara and have tower defense. So we'll just put that in there, play our Amara. Just never going to be able to play this tower defense. Okay. Um. What was that? Is that a cat? Is that a kitty cat? Come here. Hey, Hawkeye. I do want to flip landing. Um. Yeah, let's just flip landing. So we flip landing. Then I can play hero and tribunal. Or I can play Huatli and tick up. I don't think Murmuring Mystic is super important. Ah, my 
strength is our strength. Because I think we can go wider than a bunch of like our opponents' one ones. I think I'd rather save this for a crackling Drake. Or Arclight Phoenix. There you go, okay. There you go, boy. <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye's just got a little short tail. Um, oh, didn't get the third spell. Um, hmm. Take up My again. strength is our strength. It's a little bit of a sad story with Hawkeye's little short tail. Um, he's actually a, a stray cat in Iowa during the winter. Like whenever he, he was first born during the winter, part of his tail froze off. That's why he's got a little short tail. But he's he's all better and everything now. He doesn't mind it. Um. Hmm. Could tower defense here. But I guess it makes sense to tower defense here. So let's go ahead and uh, do this for two. Maybe I should have just taken out this Murmuring Mystic. <clears throat> what do I want to do with Huatli? Like, do I want to ultimate Huatli next turn? Do I want to just minus and make a big lifelink attacker? Why are you just suddenly attacking me? How many phoenixes is that? Still just one? Oh, they have two phoenixes? That was a pretty crazy, crazy turn for them. Let your defeat be a lesson to those who come after. You can block three things for free. Yeah, we're drawing all our lands.
Guess I should have just tried being old the murmuring mystic before. Goblin Electromancer is nuts. Can we draw Flourish? Or Tristani? Play Tristani. That'd be great. All these things have life links. We can gain a bunch of life. We need Flourish or Tristani. I must concede defeat for now. Hmm. Tristani. Hooray, Tristani. And a march. And do I just march? Um, yeah, so we'll get the hero back. If I if I don't attack, what do our our opponent has six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve in the air right now? Oh, yeah, we should probably fear hasted phoenixes. Good call. Ta let's attack with some lifelinkers. Let them block with the hero. So our, our opponent cannot kill us, even if they get all three other Phoenixes in play. They don't have lethal. With our opponent blocking with Electromancer, it kind of feels like... kind of feels like our opponent may have Fiery Cannonade. Or they just have another Electromancer. I don't know. Okay, get that out of the way. So, three for March, then one, two, three, four. So we'll draw five cards. That was a, certainly a good turn for us last turn of drawing Kral Harpooner into Tristani. That was good as we could draw. We're not going to have any lands left in the deck here pretty soon. We got another Tristani. That's a bold attack for the opponent. Looks like we're going to a game three. Usually you don't see Murmuring Mystic with, you know, nine making nine tokens and being completely outclassed.
So do I want to... I mean, we'll see what we draw here. I'm not sure if I want to go with Tristani and Hero or Tristani and Spellbreaker. I'm thinking Tristani and Spellbreaker. We just go hero. It just draws a bunch more cards. I don't know. Spellbreaker kills them. We don't really need more cards. Still drawing though, because we could hit like Conclave Tribunal that we could play for free. And hey, we don't have to worry about decking, we got 30 cards. This is a game right here. The opponent's dead. If they keep blocking like this, they do a lot of chump, chump blocks. This is a good game. Good game of magic. Yeah, well, one main reason why we have the Red Splash is for Huatli Warrior Poet, because we are a Huatli deck. Um, so that's a good reason for the Red Splash, I and mean, we, we got to have it for Huatli. But overall, I've been just super impressed with Spellbreaker in this deck. It has been really clutch for us so much. Should probably get this extra March in here. March was really good. I'm going to take out the other, this other Huali. I could play Canopy to kill Crackling Drake. But, nah. No, Cinder Vines is not good. At the very, the very best, like, Cinder Vines is, like, two mana deal, like, six damage at, like, the very best. At the worst, you're drawing, you're not playing Cinder Vines on turn two and all the other kind of stuff. But against Drakes, like, you need a, you need to have a quick battlefield presence against them. You need to be playing creatures early. You can't just be playing Cinder Vines and expect to, like, beat Arc like Phoenix. Like, they're, they just completely outrace you. So yeah, I'm not trying to, to, to pick on you, King Toll. It's just every every time I play against a, a Drakes or Phoenix, somebody says put in Cinder Vines or you know ask about Cinder Vines, and it's just not it's not a card that you want in your deck. You'd much rather be doing other things. Like it, it's it's pretty easy for the opponent to beat the card. I guess that's what I'm saying. Like. Like imagine you're the opponent. If he, if you, if you see Cinder Vines, you're really happy. Where's our red man at? Yeah, Cinder Vines is for Wilderness Reclamation. Whether it's the Nexus one or the. The team reversion for the Wilderness Reclamation decks. Alright, found our red mana. Last game our opponent did not kill Amara right away, which is really nice for us. So 
So like, let's just pretend like one of these Kral Harpooners was a Cinder Vines. Like, would I shock in and play Cinder Vines this turn, or would I play Amara? And I think it would be better to play Amara. I am worried about how much shocking I'm having to do. This is an awkward spot with like the 4-4, the 3-3. Three, three. You know, it wouldn't be bad to have the haste uh, since Lava Coil kills 3-3 three, three or 4-4. Four, four. The problem is, is if they have Crackling Drake, I really want the 4-4 four, four, um, because if they just play Crackling Drake, then I can't attack. Um, and so that's why I really want the 4-4 four, four body. And it's awkward that our creature got exiled and it wasn't just shock so that Harpooner doesn't kill Crackling Drake either. So that's that's what I was talking about, the awkward part there, that we could have got the three points in if we would have gone haste. Man, we're gonna shock again. I guess so. It's all shock all the time. Taking six damage from our mana base here. So much. Oh, not you, not you, not you. You. And this is the problem with Phoenix, how it keeps coming back. I, and, you know, I have the four Conclave Tribunals, but if we don't draw a Conclave Tribunal. Hey, there's Tribunal. Um, so save Tribunal for Phoenix. Alright, we'll tribunal that thing. So playing Hawatli makes another token. Oh don't don't shock my hero. No. So now I cannot Yeah, I mean that just makes my Hawatli a lot worse, makes the march worse. That was a really good shock for them. Bleh. I was gonna be able to play Hawatli and play Conclave Tribunal and have like the three creatures. Really well time shock. Looks like we're dead. Too many crackling drakes. Yeah, I know that was a bad shock. Okay. Yeah, I need to like move over here for the be in front of the light. <clears throat> Alright, lost to Phoenix. It's really that that game one was one that I thought they were gonna win. Um that you know they ended up having that very last turn they had, you know, 
two phoenixes in, in their hand that they got to discard and bring back then bring back three phoenixes and hit us for lethal right before we were going to kill him that first game was rough but we kind of see how our cards we noticed this like previously too the blue red decks are playing a lot of shocks these days and our cards don't match up good against shocks you know shocks are really good against our heroes and amaros and everything like that Yeah, Beagle, we got an early stream today. Early stream hype. This is a slow hand against Mono Red. Regular Mono Red, though, we, we can play some good defense against their creatures, you know, with, um, with our creatures. Uh, Phoenix... And Drake's is a lot tougher. We don't get to play defense there. Um, I don't know what that deck is, Panther. So I guess not. I don't. I don't know what deck you're referring to. That's pretty good. So we'll put this down to seven, and then we tribunal the. Chain Whirler. Quali's a nice draw. Um, cause we need to play Tristani next turn. Oh, come on. That's not good for us. Never mind, we're, we're just facing lethal. Alright, so last time playing against them, we brought in these, took out took out a couple marches, because they take a, a while to cast, not good against Chain Whirler, that kind of stuff. Take out a Legion's Landing and the Ajani. Yeah, no, I have not seen an Izzet deck with a bunch of 1-1 one -one creatures before. But I guess it's real popular in best of one. I mean, I love Spellbreaker in this matchup. I think Spellbreaker is really strong. Um, you know, just being a 4-4. So keeping this because of Spellbreaker. I'm not shocking, as you can tell. Basically, shocking is giving the opponent a... Basically giving them a free draw. Huh, you played it three times today and you saw it four times on other streams? Yeah, I guess it's a, a good best of one deck, I suppose. Great draw step for us there. Great draw step. That's why we got four of those things in. Sorry, opponent. Clean my glasses. I'll work on that here in a little bit, too. Honestly, I wonder if I should have just put a shock land in and tapped the spellbreaker. I don't get to do the four damage, but then, um, we don't have to like shock next turn to play Huali. I'm getting Huali out of bolt range immediately. Come, 
sing the song of fame. So we're at a good life total for risk factor. We are doing okay against risk factor. The second risk factor is annoying. We're well, not that annoying. We have, you know, Huali tick up. Their this strength game three. is your strength. Could just play new Huali here. Nothing else to do with my mana. Maybe I should have just gone dinosaur with this one and then new Huatli tick up. Their strength is your strength. Basically making this risk factor, making both their risk factors just non, not relevant. Good job, Watley. The warrior poet won that game all by herself. Made a 3-3 and then just gained 6 life. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Huali can't just target creature or target players. Also, unfortunately for us, no, I I haven't had any experience. Yeah, no issues logging into arena at all. Here either. All right, good hand. We got double spellbreaker. Talk about how that's been a that's a pretty powerful card. It's usually two for one. And tribunal's a good draw. Hope they don't just have a shock here for Amara where they get to shock and untap and chain whirler. Hopefully not. That's unfortunate. That worked out very well for the opponent. So tough spot here. If I block Chain Whirler with Spellbreaker, they just have the Firebrand shoot the Spellbreaker. So we just trade Spellbreaker for Firebrand plus gain three life, which I guess like gain three life is basically a spell. Okay, they're going to use double removal on it. That's not as bad. Easy block on the lava runner. They want to use their lat. They want to use a burn spell on spellbreaker. I'm fine with that. All right, they're out of cards. Um, this is a time for tribunal, so I don't. I'm going to tribunal this chain whirler. So I don't have to do like the what I talked about of like block and have Firebrand just kill Spellbreaker. Um, all they need to do is just draw two burn spells. You know we're at six. We're 
two bolts kill us. Oh, wow. Wow. We have to get rid of the Firebrand. The Firebrand deals three to us with this Flame Akeld. It's not a bad, bad idea, Papa Tim. I can't. I can't beat this. Like, there's there's not a possible way for me to beat this. Um. I guess I have to decline and maybe draw a tribunal for Flamekeld. We have Huatlis for gain life. That's what we did. We had last last game. We played a bunch of Huatlis and gained a lot of life with them. Great draws there. Um, we had been really good against Mono Red with this deck before, uh, but and honestly, with how our hand looked, I, I thought we would probably win. But uh, just awesome, awesome hand for the opponent, and great draws there at the end of the game. Their their first, um, you know, like they had the turn two shock to go with their light up the stage. That light up stage was perfect for the chain whirler. Um, that Flay McKeld was perfect into Risk Factor, so, um, So, you know, end of the end of the day for us with Nia Huatli. Um, sometimes you gotta tip your hats to the opponent's decks. You know, playing against Isaac Drakes and Mono Red Burn, they 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 have really high upside. Their best hands are beating our best hands, kind of thing. Um, and you know, they had. They had some real good ones there, the last two matches. So, unfortunately, we're going down with a 3-2. But that's still above average. Not so bad. Still don't love these crushing canopies in the sideboard. I think that's what I'm not really sure what to do with with those. Um, but another fun day for Naya Huali. Both Huali's got to do stuff. We got to ultimate Huali Radiant Champion, which is awesome. We got to gain a ton of life with Warrior Poet. We had a Warrior Poet kill some Steamkins, which was pretty cool. Um, yeah, this deck's awesome. Um, I'll probably play it again on Thursday during the 12-hour stream. That's my next plan to play this, this deck again. So there we go. All right, so if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, uh, please hit that subscribe button over there. And thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.